Hello and welcome to A Moment in the Word. It was my sophomore year of college that I took a literature class. Now, English and literature were never my favorite subjects, but I had to get it to get my degree. And I, I have to admit, after chugging through Dr. Zhivago, which I can't say was my favorite, I was so grateful when on my reading list, it was time to read Pride and Prejudice. I had never read it before, but I had heard about it and I knew it was gonna be a great book. So compared to the other books in my class, I actually loved Pride and Prejudice. But I remember as I would read it, I'd come to class and my professor would wanna discuss it and he would always wanna look at like the deeper meaning, you know, like, is it a piece of feminine literature or what does prejudice really mean and and how, how do we how do we look at through the lens of reputation and i just remember being 18 or 19 year old years old like not caring about any of that i just kind of wanted to enjoy the love story and i think as we look at a lot of even today we can watch romantic comedies or if any of you watch those lovely Hallmark movies at Christmas, you can just engage in a fun love story. And so when I, when I engage in Songs of Solomon, yes, there's all kinds of undercurrent meanings about even Christ and his church that you can, you can weave through it. But at times, I just like to look at it through the lens of the love poem or the love story that it is. One piece that we're going to look at today, how that in all love stories, whether it be Pride and Prejudice with Elizabeth Bennett and Darcy or your favorite Hallmark Christmas movie, or now they even have Valentine's movies, whatever it might be, there's always that place of tension, right? Where the man and the woman, you think they're going to come together and you're just like sitting at, sitting watching the TV being like, just kidding kiss, just kiss. All right, that's what I do. Maybe you don't. But there, there's this, these tensions of kind of hoping that love wins. Well, we see that even in this song. We're going to start right in chapter 2, verse 16, where you see this, this scene come over and over again in this, love, in this love story. But my beloved is mine and I am his. He browses among the lilies. So you, you just see this beautiful place of this man and woman together. And then almost all of the sudden, she begins to speak in different tone. All night long on my bed, I looked for the one my heart loves. I looked for him, but did not find him. I will get up now and go about the city through its streets and squares. I will search for the one my heart loves. So I looked for him, but I did not find him. And then just a few verses down, once she finds him. So you can just see, she goes from, oh, he's my beloved and I am mine, to, oh, where is he? And then she goes searching for him. And then just two sentences down, she finds him and says, I held him and would not let him go till I had brought him to my mother's house. So you see this tension rising. And, and I think one of the things that we know, those of us who are married, that within marriage and within love, specifically within human romantic love, there is always tension. There is always these ups and downs and finding each other and searching for each other once again. That's what makes it so beautiful. In the end of the song, we see this beautiful tribute to love that showcases no matter the ups and downs, love will prevail. For love is as strong as death, its jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like a blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love, rivers cannot sweep it away. If one were to give all the wealth of one's house for love, it would be utterly scorned. So in the midst of this kind of finding and searching, we come to the end and say, many waters can not quench love. It makes me think of that beautiful passages in 1 Corinthians 13, that other love chapter that unpacks love in such a beautiful way. It ends with this very simple words. There's three things that last forever, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This love that is showcased so beautifully in this garden depiction of human love is, can be an image to the love that Christ has and specifically the love he has for his church. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you for the power of love as there's faith and hope, but the greatest of these is love. We thank you today for the greatest of these. Again, we do lift up marriages this week. We thank you, Lord God, for the gift of marriage, the gift you give us in each other, the gift of romance, the gift of human sexuality in the context of marriage, Lord. We are so very grateful. We pray that in all of our marriages, it would be a great expression again of your great and mighty and powerful love. We're so grateful for the love that you bestowed on us. We're so grateful that you sent your son. We're so grateful, Lord, that we can walk in this reciprocal love as you love us. We can extend your love to others. We pray this in your name. Amen. Mm -hmm.